Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another dismal Disney news update. Yeah, I mean, frankly, right now there's nothing else. There really isn't. There's no good news coming from Disney at this point. It's all bad. This is actually the worst case scenario for the company. Yeah. Where all their business segments are, are basically shut down. The, but the ones the that they're the ones that are the big ones. Yeah, the ones that matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so we're gonna talk about uh, Disney executives are not happy about their pay cuts. We're gonna talk about how much money Disney is actually losing per day, and it's more than I thought. Uh, it was. We're going to talk about uh, you know all these layoffs and uh, you know whether or not union employees are going to get laid off. Uh, we're going to talk about some other effects of Disney's lack of income, including some movies being pushed on to Disney Plus and Marvel Comics again laid a bunch of people off. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. I can't help it. I, mean, I just can't. I mean, the way they've been behaving at Marvel, they deserve it. Anyway. I am surprised Marvel's made it this long. I am too. But the behavior... And then and then you have that one chick that's right in the She-Hulk show on Twitter making comments right and left. I don't understand how she has a job still. Oh, is that that uh, Dana... Is it Schwartzman? Dana Schwartzman? I don't know what... Yeah, yeah I think she's, it's, she's on there she like the making comments all the time, being really disrespectful, and then she gets to continue to work. So, you know... <sighs> yep, yep. But we'll see. We'll see what happens because Disney is in panic mode, guys. Everybody seems to think Disney has unlimited money. We've been telling you for years that is not the case. They've actually overextended themselves, mm -hmm. but they're really good at putting on a good show, uh, putting on a, a smile even when they're breaking the bank. The fact that they've gone in two weeks, two or three weeks time to the, where they've had to go so quickly just shows you they weren't in the position that everybody thought they were in, except for us because we said it. Yeah, they had to borrow money like week one. They borrowed yeah. billions of dollars week one. Um, within three weeks, within three weeks, we've seen Disney go from, hey, this is going to be fine, fam, to, oh my God, let's borrow a bunch of money. Let's, you know, furlough everybody. Let's cut executive pay. What are we going to do? Yeah. And we're going to talk about exactly how much money they're losing. Yet somehow the stock hasn't completely bottomed out yet. It is dropping again. I expect it to, to bottom out about 75 bucks a share. Um, I don't know. If it hits 75 bucks a share, I'd say scoop it up. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to go, but you know, it, it hit down 55. To well, you know, my, you it hit 55. Yeah, it did. You should have, you should have bought it at, I at, at the, the 82. Anyway. Anyway, um, so it's going to keep dropping, guys. So this is coming from the Orlando Business Journal. Millions lost the daily, I guess we can talk about it now, pandemic costs for Disney and the rest of the tourism industry. This is how much money Disney has lost. Uh, so they're saying as of March 31st, that's a couple days ago, Walt Disney World will have lost as much as 612 million or 38 million per day since the closure. And that's that, just Walt Disney World. That's just Disney World. That's not counting Disneyland. That's not counting Disney Cruise Line. And that figure is a conservative estimate of the combined revenue from admissions, hotel stays, parking, merchandise, food and beverage. Uh, Universal, they could have lost as much as 172 million. Again, that's Orlando. We're not counting Hollywood, too. Right. Uh, SeaWorld could have lost more than $28 million just in like two weeks. Yeah, and SeaWorld is really not in a position to you know, recover if it continues for a long period of time. Yeah, um, industry-wide. Now, this again, this is the Orlando uh, Business Journal, so they're just dealing with the Orlando area. Industry-wide, the loss of revenue on a daily basis for tourism amounts to more than $205 million every day. Wow. Every day. That comes out to a staggering $3.28 billion lost business from the day the theme parks closed. That's only two weeks. Can you imagine if this thing goes on for two months, three months, yeah. four months? I mean, we're talking catastrophic losses. Uh, and Disney, you know, again, people think they have unlimited money. Yeah. They don't. They do not. And the, the parks bankroll every other division of the company. And they also think that as soon as it opens back up, that it's, they're going to snap their fingers and everybody's going to be able to go right back the way it was and it's not going to happen. It's going to be a slow rollout. When they open these parks back up, they might even just open one or two back up. They might say, hey, we're going to limit the number of people. We're going to have half the rides open. Mickey's not going to give you a hug. He's going to stand way over there and wave at you. Honestly, guys, I'm going to tell you flat out, if you're going to go to Disney, I wouldn't even do it till next year. Yeah. I mean, not just because, you know, I think it's going to not open to the end of the year. That's not what I'm saying. But because of everything going on, because of the effects of things rolling out, because of all the stuff that might be happening and Epcot might stay closed longer and everything else, I would wait until next year. It's going to be the 50th anyway, so there's going to, there's going to be more stuff going on. I just personally, I know travel agents are trying to get you to book now, book now, book now for because they're losing money and they don't want to wait till next year. But as a consumer, I'd wait till next year. 
Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, look at these photos. Um, this is when they cleared the parks out. Empty dis. I mean, this is something you don't see, and it's kind no, of... No, I would love to walk down the... I mean, any park fan would yeah. love to walk down these streets right now. That would be something. That would be creepy. So I don't know, you know, if anybody works... I know we've got some people that work security at Disney that watch our videos, and I'm like, I don't know if they keep the music playing, if it just keeps... Oh, yeah, let us know how it, what it's like. We won't tell you. We won't give your name or anything. Just write us and let us know. Explain what it's like walking around. I would like to know, because I guess I always figured the music just kind of, like, turned itself on every day, and I can't imagine walking around these parks with nobody in them with no music, just hearing birds chirping or whatever. That would be really freaking weird. Yeah, and also if anything weird happens, like anything creepy or weird happens, we'd like to know, too. So please let us know if you hear anything cool or you have a story to share. Ghosts or aliens? Aliens. That's right. Alien. Well, the people away the aliens are going to visit Walt Disney World. They are. That's right. They are. Uh, that's that's what they're going to do. They're going to party at Disney. There you go. That's this whole thing is because aliens wanted to visit Disney. That's going to be on ancient aliens. They caused this whole thing. Just to... ancient, ancient alien. Astronaut theorists believe. <laughs> Astronaut theorists believe that aliens love Disney World and they wanted to go visit. Well, somebody pointed out on Facebook and I thought it was funny. They said, wait, so this year is 2020, the year of the rat and we have a plague. Uh, and then Disney shuts and down. And Disney, yeah. So, so it's like, um, yeah, it's kind of creepy. So, okay, so we're going to talk about, again, their financial situation. This is coming from WDW News Today. I have a hard time saying that because, like, WDW Today. Um, it's coming from yeah. WDW News Today. Which I highly recommend, uh, by the way. Yeah, they're honest, and Disney hates them. Yeah, so that, that's the two good reasons to visit. Uh, they were honest. They've been honest for like 10 like years. Us. We're honest and Disney probably doesn't like us. So they probably don't. Go. But they've gone on a tear after this website because they, they do uh, speak the truth, whether or not you want to hear it. That's a um, bad thing. That's a bad thing. So Disney is already looking for a bailout. They're lobbying for a cut of the $500 billion CARES Act emergency aid package. Now, remember, they were telling their employees um, when they they announced the furloughs, and we're going to talk about those furloughs, that, hey, guys, don't worry, you can get $600 a week from the government. That's right, yeah. So, so Disney is basically banking on the government to bail out their employees at this point. Right, which I have, I'm going to roll that into we talk about executives here in a minute, too. Yeah, so this is coming from the Sentinel, the $500 billion stabilization fund, the most controversial element of Congress's $2.2 trillion emergency economic aid package will be used to backstop as much as $4 trillion worth of loans to large employers. Um, so there's about almost $500 billion left. Right. They, they have some set aside for like airlines and cargo yeah. airlines and, and national security. After that, there's about $454 billion that they can subsidize loans to city, states, or other businesses that have otherwise not received adequate economic relief for the government programs. Okay, so that's the thing. Disney has already taken out a bunch of money they've gone mm -hmm. to the debt that wasn't through this they went they went and took loans uh, so they're they're again just to show you you know what kind of a place disney is actually in a couple weeks of shutdown they're already borrowing money from the debt market yeah billions they're laying people off they say furlough i think it's going to go further than that and now they're already kind of looking to the government to bail them out Mm -hmm. um, so Disney does not have billions and billions of dollars sitting in the bank to weather this kind this of is a, storm. This is in sharp contrast to this time last year when they were interviewing like Bob Iger about about Galaxy's Edge. And he's like, oh, it's, we don't have to advertise it. Just throw in Star Wars. They didn't know it's come flocking over. No yep. problem. That was like that last year this time. And now this year, this time, we're, we have this. Yeah, I mean, you could not have more of a 180. And, you know, Disney's best year is followed by their worst year. Well, honestly, I mean, I'm not saying people deserve it, but uh, the arrogance, this this better humble some people. That's all I got to say. Well, Disney went on a spending spree. They had cash reserves. They've been very, they've been a very fortunate company. Um, but Bob Iger went on a spending spree and he did not recoup the money on a lot of his investments. Fox, I'm, I'm still... I'm sticking to my guns. Fox was a complete waste of money. Mm -hmm. Complete waste of money. Drain the coffers. And Disney thought they were going to fly high forever. Now, nobody could have foreseen this happening no. a year ago because this is completely unprecedented. But even before this, we knew this was going to be a, a downturn because uh, we, they didn't have big movies, tent no. movies coming out this year. They had some big movies, but not enough. And they were they were all holding off for the 50th. They're going to do some stuff, but they're all waiting for the 50th. They're putting all the stuff in the yeah. 50th of Walt Disney World. 
and they were there wasn't going to be a lot of people coming. They're going to wait till next year, so it wasn't going to be a big year anyway. And then you threw this on top of it. Yeah, now a lot of their movies are getting pushed back. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Some are getting dumped on to Disney Plus, but they're they're in this stimulus package. There's a bunch of stuff for travel dependent businesses to take out loans. Uh, so Disney, of course, is going to panhandle. They they need more loans than they've already taken. Right, and they were there. Week one, week one, Trump had a, a meeting with, uh, you know, some of the, the travel people and the mm -hmm. amusement people. And Disney was there with their lobbyist in the very first week looking for money after they took out six or seven billion dollars in, in debt market. So what's going to happen offer. is all the people with unemployment are going to run out of that six hundred dollars yes. a week. But then that's OK. Disney's going to get billions of dollars to, to bail them out. So here we go. So now uh, the disaster continues. So we talked about in another video about how Disney executives we're getting pay cuts. They said it's supposed to be temporary. Right. I don't think it's going to be temporary. No. You don't think it's going to be temporary. I said that to begin with. A lot of times when they give pay cuts like this, uh, they end up making it permanent. Uh, they did not put any kind of date in the contract. And they gave executives two days to sign it. So I wrote the story yesterday about this. And they're basically upset because the there's no language in there for when this is going to be over. It just says you take a temporary pay cut. And they said like for VPs that are the low end, they're getting 20% taken off. They, they run anywhere between 150 to 200,000. Some go even higher depending on their department. And um, so they're losing like 30 to 40,000, just them. And, you know, they're all like, well, we wanted to an answer about when and Disney won't give them one. And they had two days to agree to it. Um, now, something I want to point out, though, is they said about Chapek giving up 50%. No, Bob Chapek giving up 50% of his base pay. His base pay, he would get about $1.25 million still, but that doesn't count all his incentives because he gets an annual target bonus of $7.5 million and long-term incentive grant of $15 million. So he's not, comparatively speaking, giving up much. Iger giving up 100% of his, his salary, which is $3 million. But, you know, they, they mentioned in the article that he actually earned 44.5 with additional compensation. Now, of course, it was on performance and it's not going to be that way this year, but they're not, they're not really giving up a lot, you know, statistically speaking. It's it's all for show. I mean, right. it, it really is. Um, and meanwhile, they're going to do that so they can justify, I think, furloughing and laying off a bunch of employees. Um, so the Hollywood Reporter broke the news. Um, they told uh, they were told that representatives who have pushed back on behalf of their executive clients have been met with a Disney Business Affairs Department unwilling to negotiate. And then Disney came out and said to the Hollywood well, Reporter, one other, a source from Disney, a source from Disney. Much of the company has ground to a halt because of this pandemic. And for these people to complain in the face of so much suffering in the world is just incredibly selfish and sad. Well, here's my thing. You know what, executives, at least you have a job. I, I understand, yeah. you know, some of the lower paying people are, aren't getting a whole lot of money anyway we're, compared to where they live. OK, but at least you have a job. And when you're sitting there complaining about taking a 20, 20, was it 20, 25 or 30 percent pay cut? There are people that you just got done telling to take, well, go, you get laid off, go get the extra $600 a month from the government, you know? And you're bitching about 20% off of your, you know, several hundred thousand dollar job. Yeah. I mean, perspective, please. Yeah, and these people, a, a lot of Disney cast members are hand to mouth. You know, it's it's week to week. Um, well, they had not, to fight to get a raise. Yeah, they had to fight to get a raise and unionize. And I'm wondering, I mean, I don't know the specifics. I've never belonged to a union. Um, now you were in a teacher's union. I was, but it was so many years ago. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know the specifics, uh, but I don't know if Disney can use this situation to bust up the union. I, I don't know. I honestly, I, I, they had the fight to get the union in there to begin with. I don't know. I don't know if they will. I know that they might get rid of problematic people. They might yes. use this to be like, oh, you're furloughed, but you're going to be coming back. Um, now, Disneyland, the union people... Okay, they're working with they're negotiating the union people right now. That's going on all weekend. They're trying to negotiate. They have they have told the union, at least the one in Disneyland, that all union cast members will keep their jobs and their seniority. Um, yeah. Well, they'll be, they'll be brought back first. The non-union people, I think, are the ones that could you know get the boot. Yeah, I think what's going to happen, yeah, so they're going to, I mean, look, the furloughs are coming. Um, and again, the difference between a furlough and a layoff is I learned in this situation because I never knew the difference. Uh, the difference between a furlough and a layoff is you're technically still employed with the company. You're just not getting a paycheck. Now, Disney is extending benefits, health benefits mm -hmm. to people during this time. But the way they're spinning it is like, oh, hey, it's just going to be this really short term thing. 
No, I don't think it's going to be. I think it's going to be months. It's going to be months until these parks are open. You know, one thing you know, I have to look into, I haven't heard much about is what happened to the cruise line employees? Like, I know that the parks and resorts, I got, would they be considered cruise line? Would that be considered resorts? Uh, would they be getting the furlough as well? Because I know that they just laid off uh, 50 of the Port Canaveral workers yeah. that were related to cruise um, and recreation. Um, and they aren't, they're planning on them being furloughed until the 30th of May, which means no cruises at least till June. I'm honestly expecting it for long on that. The cruises, I think the cruise line will open up later than the theme parks because the cruise ships have been such a source of, you know, and, and they're already talking that part of, you know, what might happen because of this is that they're going to force cruise ships to register uh, as U.S. Mm -hmm. because they're they're getting away with a lot of shenanigans because they're registering these ships in the Bahamas or, or you know, Panama or whatever. And they're like, no, no, no. You want the benefits of, of uh, you know, American taxpayer money. You're going to have to register your ship here in the U.S. Well, and pay gonna, the taxes. It's really interesting too because because of this this uh, in you know thing going on right now, um, they are like closing ports and stuff to ships. Mm -hmm. I know San Di San Diego had let Disney was it Disney Wonder. Yeah, I into dock of like a, a couple weeks ago, and everybody got off of it. There was a bunch of them that have the virus yeah. and they haven't been infecting San Diego. So they had just ships that are coming in this like last week from other companies too. And now they're shutting their port down that you cannot, you know, dock a ship and disembark because of the spread. Yeah, it's, it's bad. Um, and I'm sorry. I think these employees are going to be gone for a while. I think the actual cruise line employees at Disney, I don't, I don't know what the rules are because as I understand it, from talking to a couple of cast members on the ship, I don't think they have the same rules they apply to stateside workers because of the flag flying the Bahamas flag, you know, that they don't have to, because I know these people work like seven days a week, mm -hmm. which, you know, and they work long hours, seven days a week. I don't think it's it's legal in the US. They definitely aren't union, because if you're a union, you'd not be allowed to, to right. do that. I don't know what the deal is. So if anyone's uh, worked on a Disney cruise line can, can let us know what your deal is uh, anonymously in the comments or, or, you know, send us a PM Tell us or your something. grievances. We will gladly yeah, take a look I, at them. I am really curious how that works. I do know that they do, a lot of those people do work seven days a week, though. And a lot of them are not from America, either. They mm -hmm. get they pick up people from all over the world. Yeah, I know. So, I don't know. Um, That's how they got away, I think, some of the, the people not being background checked the way they should be. Yes. There's been several instances in the last couple years of uh, inappropriate behavior on cruise ships. Yeah. So um, yep. I don't know if that's how they're getting away with it or what. Uh, I don't know. Um, I do know that I, I think Cruise is forever going to be changed after this. I think they should have they to fly. They need to be. Yeah, they should have to fly an American flag. If you're an American company, I think your cruise ship needs to be registered in the U.S. Uh, you got to pay your taxes. You want protection. You got to pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. You got to play by the rules or else plays by but they don't want to. They've skirted that for years. So anyway, um, yeah, lots of people getting laid off. Now, this is what we we're talking about. Again, WDW News Today, that uh, Disney, a lot of times when they do layoffs like this, uh, or they do furloughs or temporary whatever cutbacks, they wind up being permanent. Mm -hmm. um, they wind up getting rid of people that they, they wanted to get rid of, but they were too nice to get rid of before. Now, we talked about that uh, the woman who was the accountant at Disney and she went to the SEC, she was a whistleblower. She got caught up in the 2017 layoffs mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, she was problematic using air quotes before then but then of course once they they tossed her overboard they could say well no 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 we didn't fire her because she was digging up dirt on the company we fired her because you know we had layoffs and we just had to make some cuts and that's what happened i do think a lot of these these uh, furloughed employees might find themselves unfortunately especially non-union they're going to find themselves permanently yeah, as off. of now they're just furloughed as um, of now but if they have to, to drop more weight i i would be concerned yep anyway well, Disneyland Paris is doing this. Um, they were set to be paid through April 19th. Now the company is trying to cut costs by uh, stopping to pay some cast members sooner. Mm -hmm. Now these are probably not not uh, union. They're I'm temporary sure. workers, I yeah. think. Well, we saw that with the construction projects. There was something on, what was it, Channel 6 or Channel 9 News in Orlando where Disney you know, stopped all the construction and they're just like, you're done. Yeah. You're done because they, they didn't have the protection that a regular. Well, once again, have. it's the performers in this case, which we have seen performers get kind of the shaft and yeah. in U.S. parks a couple times. 
So they said that these like the actors, dancers, stunt performers, and tech crew that were part of the shows running until June, and June, which is not going to be open. Yep. And Marvel season of superheroes, Frozen celebration, Stark Expo, Mickey and, and the Magician. Um, so there's over 350 people in total. I think that's what they're meaning. 350. Um, so they even canceled the one Marvel season of superhero show. These are those people who aren't getting paid, apparently. Yeah, performers at Disney, they always get cut first. And that's why, you know, I mean, we knew it was bad when at Epcot they cut acts that had been there for decades. Mm -hmm. They were like, yeah, we're done. The one was there 25 years, guys. Um, That was the drummers Mm -hmm. in Japan. Yeah, they've been there pretty much since the beginning. And when they cut people loose like that, they're not coming back. They're probably not coming back. What they did was on April 1st, they sent an email to these, these uh, more like the actors and performers, mm-hmm. and asking them to agree to an amicable break to their employment contract, citing exceptional circumstances. And they proposed an early termination um, of the contract, but they told me they had to agree to it by April 2nd. Yeah, and they said, if you refuse, if you refuse, you'll be blacklisted by Disney. So take it or leave it, you mm-hmm. know? And at this point... What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? It's just a really crappy thing to do. But, uh, uh, you know, that's how desperate Disney is. Yeah, they're, Disney's in not in a good place right now. And this is just the beginning, guys. Like, I can't stress to you. All of this is going on within the first couple of weeks. Everybody seems to think that even by the end of it, they're like, oh, yeah, the end of April, uh, everything is going to go back to normal. No. No, it is not. They're pushing their movies back. Uh, we're going to talk about that. It is not going to go back to normal. And Disney is going to use this situation to cut as much dead weight off as mm-hmm. they can because they have to survive. The company has to survive. And at the end of the day, um, to the executives who are pissed off now, but to those executives, the company's survival is more important than individuals. And that's just well, it's ever, it's unless, it's, unless it's their pay that's being unless cut. Unless it's their pay. Then their pay is more important than all the other individuals. So we're going to see more and more of this in the coming months. I am surprised that this has happened this soon. Artemis Fowl, they're dumping it on the Disney+. Plus. I'm not surprised by this because their early reactions to the trailer were not good. No, I, I know fans of the books were like, it looks like a shit show. It's yeah, not. so that's going direct to, to Disney+, Plus now at the end of May. Yeah, and that's what happened with Onward. Onward, you know, look, look they're going to blame the virus, but Onward underperformed massively at the box office. Mm-hmm. So it was like no loss to them to just dump it on no. Disney+. Plus. Another one know? they ship on Disney+, Plus, but they're not going to, is Milan, because, yeah. again, I think it had more backlash than Artemis Fowl did, yeah. and they refused to put it on Disney+, Plus because it, they, they spent $200 million on it. Um, but they probably should just put it at Disney+. Plus. Yeah, we can talk a little bit about this because, look, everybody's banking on these movies once they come back online. We're upset because Sony's pushing stuff back to next year. A lot of, lot of them are pushing to next year. The movie theaters might not be open next year. Uh, there was a story today that AMC may not come back, and AMC is one of the largest mm-hmm. franchises. You know, so, I mean, there, there goes the box office. Like, if half the movie theaters in the country are closed... Well, here's the thing. I think they're playing ball for now yeah. because they don't want to like cut out the movie theater because the movie theater people because that'll go over very badly as we saw yeah. with Warner. It was Warner, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, Universal. 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 Okay, yeah. Universal. Um, but if they just happen to go under on their own, they don't have to you know go through them anymore. I don't think they're gonna be too upset. If it, yeah, if AMC goes under, Disney's gonna just start dropping movies. I think. Or is it gonna come up to that thing? Well, I don't know the, the money, but remember that Disney was trying to get that one law changed where you weren't allowed to own theaters. Oh right. There was a law. Yeah, I yeah. forget what it's off my head, but it was from Par- like it had something to do with Paramount back in the 30s but, or 40s. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 certain people, places that were like big studios couldn't own the theaters too, um, and that's why I think they went and did Adam tickets instead as their their get their you know way, yeah. Well, I'm wondering if, if these places go belly up, if Disney's not going to come in and try to swoop them up. But with what money? Because they have the money for that. They couldn't pay their people. That's a bunch of load of crap. Yeah, because what's going to happen is everybody's going to be be uh, starting at zero at this point. It's it's because, yeah, normally it'd be like Disney would be like, oh, the theaters went out of business. Oh, that's so sad. We're going to buy them. We're going to mm-hmm. buy them, too. We're going to add that gem to the gauntlet. I, I wouldn't be surprised they wouldn't buy one if they could get away because they were trying to get that law yeah. repealed. Um, if they get that law repealed, I wouldn't be surprised if they wouldn't swoop in and grab a chain. You know who could prob- Disney, Disney theaters. You know who could probably do it? Who? Netflix. Netflix, <laughs> Netflix buys go. all the movie theaters. But would Netflix bother? Because, <laughs> you know, they might, though, because weren't they, like, in trouble? Like, they weren't allowed to put some of their movies yeah. up for uh, for awards and yeah. stuff because they said they weren't theatrical releases. Yeah. And then they, they think they're kept out of the theater sometimes. So they're like, they might just to be like a big screw you. Yeah, because Hollywood was trying to keep Netflix out. Uh, Netflix, you know, is producing a lot of movies with big name actors. You know, they had, uh, you know, 
you know, the Irishman with Martin Scorsese, the... Um, but some of those did get up for awards this year, but in the past they had the fight they were blocked, to be yeah. included. And I'm like, wouldn't that be a nice FU? So there you go, Netflix. Here's an idea for you. Buy up AMC and then you control the spice and then they could offer a deal. I could totally see them, see them doing it. Be like, okay, well you can get like Netflix plus and you get unlimited access to go see movies first in the theater. You know, and then you can go home and watch them on on Netflix or something. I, I could see them do it because they might be the only ones that have the money left. I don't know, but you know, over. that's neither here nor there. That's not here. But nor that's there. an interesting idea. Um, so other cuts. We talked about this yesterday in another video, comic book video. Marvel's already cutting people loose. Of course they are. What? They can't. <laughs> they can't. What? Safe, safe space and Snowflake isn't bankroll in the company. Oh my God! I I'm telling you, I think Disney will shut down Marvel's comic book output completely. And Marvel will just be printing reprints. Because what's the purpose? Diamond has closed shop. Diamond will probably not come back. Because by the time Diamond, you know, by the time this thing blows over, at least half the comic shops in business now will be out of business. There is no I, reason. I, I honestly expect more than half. Yeah. There's no reason for Diamond to come back to cater to a handful of comic book shops. And there's no reason for companies like Disney and Warner Brothers to spend money producing comic books for less than a thousand comic shops. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not gonna happen. And it's gonna be a, such an easy cut for Disney. They'll be like, they're gonna look at their businesses and be like, oh, comic well, books are screwed. If they do keep it, they'll just switch it to digital. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they'll be like a, they'll do. a handful of books um, produced. It'll be all the core characters. They'll do like Spider-Man and Avengers and X-Men. Wait, the real ones, the ones that they, they're, they're new versions of them. Disney is gonna be very different after this. Uh, I think Disney is going to not take the chances that they did before that they listened to stupid people and they lost a lot of money. Well, I got someone they can, you know, cook up a board right now is that, that Dana, whatever her name is, oh, from Schwartzman, she, yeah. she Hulk, because if she's on Twitter, guys, she's constantly making like derogatory comments about men, especially constantly. It, it's like, you know, any other company, if you had an employee out there going off like that, they'd be fired. Oh, Dan, she, Dan Schwartz. I thought it was Dan Schwartz. Whatever yeah. her name is. I don't even care. I just know that she thinks that she's so important. And when you look at her, she did a couple books and you look at her writing credits, she doesn't, or she doesn't have many. I don't know how she got to be put in charge of this when she doesn't have much credit at all. Every straight relationship is Nicole Kidman with Oscar the Grouch. That's right. A lot of people like, like Oscar the Grouch, so that, that just bit her in the ass. I don't know. Just She just basically is going around. She has lots of hot takes on men. I, I think what's going to happen with Disney, right? And this is what's going to happen with all of Hollywood. Um, Hollywood, the reason Hollywood got so stupid over the last five or 10 years is that times were too good. Um, the money was flowing like wine, flowing like water, and they got drunk with power. Yeah. Well, this is, wait, sorry to interrupt you for a second. Here it is. She just recently, she attempted to blame men for questioning her credentials. I'm a woman. I went and looked up her credentials. Her credentials are, are very sad. There, uh, there's nothing there that would have told me that she was capable of writing a, a big show for a, a, a big streaming service. Nothing. She has a couple credits, literally a, a couple credits for cinema. And I'm not a dude, just say it. If, at this point, um, if I worked for any division of Disney, I'd keep your head down and your mouth shut mm -hmm. because what they're going to do is they're going to look for people that they can cut very, very easily. Disney is not in good shape right now. These Hollywood people, keep your damn mouth shut. Comic book people, keep your damn mouth shut. Be lucky you have a job because you're probably, you're making yourselves an easy target. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that, that's help. That's a helpful comment. You're actually going to get yourself in more trouble by talking because right now they can't afford the bad publicity. Nope. And bad publicity is kryptonite to, to Disney. And you're out there doing that. It's going to take, it's not going to take long for it to get back to them. We know for a fact they listen to our stuff. They yeah. might already know because of this. Hey, Disney, just FYI, that brain trust you hired is out there insulting men at every turn. Not very smart if you want a, a, your audience. Oh, and insulting women for marrying men. Yeah, right. Because I, I mean, you're, obviously, if you're a woman and married a guy, you're married to Oscar the Grouch. Disney doesn't pay attention until there's bad press, and that's bad why bad press are coming. Well, that's why Marvel Comics got away with as much bullshit as it did for years because it hit the Hollywood publications that Marvel uh, two or three years ago wasn't doing very well. They they fired Axel Alonso. I think the Snowflake and Safe Space debacle sent a clear message to Disney mm -hmm. execs that Marvel's not on the right path. Mm -hmm. This is why they're getting cut. Uh, Good, they need to. 
yeah i think i think you know again if you work for any division of disney keep your damn mouth shut keep your head down if you want to survive this uh if not go for it go for it because right. Hollywood's if you don't care like we didn't care anymore then you can say whatever you want yeah we know we've been there but don't expect hollywood to welcome you back with open arms because hollywood is going to be a very very different place after this and it's you're Hopefully. gonna you're gonna have to be able to pull your own weight you're gonna have to be able to make money if you want to work in hollywood because hollywood will not have the extra money for vanity projects and for stupid stupid people that actually cost them money yeah just because you have boobs doesn't mean that you you can just do whatever you want anymore all just right because you like boobs and have boobs <laughs> doesn't mean you could do whatever you want anymore i like boobs no but you you have to have them too well, if if I can't get to the gym for another couple months, I might. That's true. I might. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yeah. Okay, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.